everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tuntvid.com. I think I've got a cool one for you today. Um, it's gonna be, we're gonna, we're gonna do five different presets. We're gonna create them here in Photoshop that are gonna be sort of inspired by Visco. We're gonna be creating a, a preset specifically to uh, create this sort of moody portrait feel. These are gonna be uh, actions or, or really camera raw presets that are targeted at portraits specifically. Um, and of course, of course, you're gonna be able to download all of these actions. There'll be a link down in the description. You can go over to my website, download the actions, use them for whatever you want, Instagram your own personal work, or you know, whatever, whatever you want, I don't care. Um, and also, if you enjoy the video, make sure you hit the like button. That just, it's really good. I really, really appreciate it. It's a little thumbs up, takes two seconds. I'd really super, super appreciate it. I usually go in and like my own videos uh, just to kick the whole thing off. Also, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any videos in the future. And also, you can buy my Photoshop course. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop and it's a great way to support the channel and what I'm trying to do here. We're moving to a new studio soon. We're up in the equipment. We're going to do some live broadcast stuff. It's going to be amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, but it all has to be paid for, so <laughs> then that's kind of important. All right, so let's, uh, well, first I'll just show you here the five different styles of uh, actions or presets that we're going to create here in this tutorial, and then we're going to get going. All right, great. So you saw the five different image styles. Let's take a look. Here's the first image. Here's the second image, third image, fourth image, fifth image. Now, these images, they're all camera raw images that I've opened in Photoshop as smart objects. I'm going to double click here on the thumbnail and it's going to reopen the camera raw editor. And uh, really, this is where all of the magic is going to happen. You can see it's all just straight out of the camera. So shot in a little barber shop. I had some studio lights there, but it's all straight out of the camera. And here's what we're going to do. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to bump the whites about plus 20 so let's kick those up about 20 and then I really want to kind of add some crunchiness to the shadows so I'm going to knock that down like negative 40 and I know it looks like whoa you just went like squid ink black on the the shadows and I did but hang with me here uh, next up we're going to go over to the curves now here this is kind of important the default curve that you're going to see is this parametric curve where as I like to call it the eh, curve it's really not that good you want to go to the point curve the point curve is the power curve that's where uh, all of the magic happens and what I'm going to do is pull up on this black point down here and you can see how immediately we add this sort of overall fade to the image really pretty cool uh, I'm going to pull down and add a point here to really kind of crunch my blacks a backward a little bit and then I'm going to pull my line back pretty much to the original uh, line and then I'm going to pull up to add some light into the highlights so you can see what we're doing here with this curve is where we are dropping these sort of brighter shadows and we're straight up lifting and brightening the absolute darkest blacks and then we're also brightening up the highlights this histogram is uh, representative of our over overall image you see up here so over here are the darkest pixels of the image going all the way to the brightest so we're kind of messing around with that let's go over to the red channel as well and what I want to do here with the red channel is I want to pull down and what that's going to do is introduce some cyan into the shadows so I'm going to pull down maybe a couple a couple points right around there I'm going to pull this point back to the center to kind of realign things and then I'm going to pull up a little bit up here which is going to introduce some reds into the highlights I'm watching here on his forehead I don't want his forehead to get too red it's pretty red uh, and you can see how this is kind of like toxic green fall off into the shadows. So I'm just keeping an eye on that as we go through this. We're going to be tweaking and adjusting things here in just a second. And next up, what I want to do is go down to the green channel. And in the green channel, I want to pull straight up on the darkest, uh, the darkest point in the image. And what that's going to do is it's going to infuse green into the shadows of the image. Now to limit this, and I know this line is kind of difficult to see, but you see it right in there. We've pulled up on that darkest or the, 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 the shadow point, if you will, on our curve. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to immediately pull back down on it to, to, to make sure I constrict the greens that are being pumped into the shadows and what that's doing you can see here it's curving the entire green line now the opposite of green is magenta so you can see the image is reflecting the fact that we're dumping a ton of magenta into the image that's this whole belly in the line that original straight line that's our original image so what we need to do to kind of restore order is place a third point and just kind of drag it back to the middle 
kind of sort of like that. And if they're still, you can see how we're bumping a little bit of green into our highlights. We can just add another point up here and just try to pull everything back into alignment. So what we're doing here is just adding a bump of green just to the shadowy parts of the image. You can see here, a lot of actually our green is not even affecting the image. So we may actually want to just move that point inward a little bit more. So the very darkest pixels in there are just getting like a little boop of green punched right into them. All right, let's go over to the blue channel where we want to go ahead and do something kind of similar. We're going to pull up on this, the, the darkest point here, which is going to infuse, right? We push up on this line. We're adding blue. The opposite of blue is yellow. So if we pull down, we're going to add a ton of yellow, right? I'm going to undo that command or control Z. But if I push up, I'm adding blue to the very darkest pixels and it's kind of fading back to normal over the course of this curve. So we're adding a lot of blue to the shadows. Kind of a cool look right off the bat. Maybe a little overdone, right? I mean, he still kind of has too much red there in the highlight. We're going to address that in a little bit here. Uh, but what I immediately need to do is again, just kind of take control control of this and just say, look, you know what, you blues only come into the shadows. Let's try to restore a little bit of order here. And then what I want to do is pull down on the highlights to just introduce yellow to the highlights. And I don't want too much yellow going to the highlights. So I'm just going to kind of pull that back and make sure that this is all good. I want to also make sure here that I don't want to pull this below that line because I don't want to pull yellow into my shadow. So there we go. You can see how he has a lot of green and there's a lot of red going on in the image still. Uh, let's go ahead. We're going to ignore that for a second. Let's go ahead. We're creating a, a preset. Remember, keep, keep in mind, we're creating a preset that a lot of different people should be able to use for a lot of different images. So hang with what we got here. I'll show you how this is all come together. We're going to come over here to the HSL grayscale tab, that little tab there. We're going to begin with hue. Now under hue, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the hue or shift the hue of reds and push it back toward magentas a little bit, maybe like negative 30. That's actually not a little bit. That's kind of a lot. Uh, and then I'm going to push oranges toward yellow. Uh, there's a lot of reds and oranges in your skin tone. And this is just kind of a cool little mix. Uh, and you can see I'm just, I'm, I'm being kind of liberal with how I dish this out. Maybe I should be a little bit more precise if these are going to be actions that I share with everyone. Uh, and then with yellows, we're going to push that back toward orange. So let's go uh, negative 20 or so. That actually looks uh, decent. And I'm not going to touch any of the remaining sliders here uh, for any of this. Next up over in the saturation tab, we're going to desaturate the reds a little bit. So this is going to begin, you're going to just watch the skin tones, right? If I take it way down, you can see the difference in the skin tones versus taking it way up. We're not going to take it down that that far. We'll go down like negative, well, let's take to negative 30, just like we did with the hue and see what that looks like. I kind of dig it. I like the way it looks. Uh, for oranges here, we're just going to knock this down a little bit. I'm going to use my arrow keys. I'm just going to push down. Maybe negative five looks good there. Uh, same thing with yellows. Maybe I'll knock that down about negative five. That looks pretty good. It's all just very nuanced here. Uh, and then with greens, I want to pull back on the greens. Uh, there's not a huge amount of greens in this particular scene, but I know that in general, I want my greens to be desaturated a little bit. We're forcing some green into the shadows, but the greens in the actual image, I want them to be desaturated a little bit. Uh, cool. That'll, that'll also look really cool if we've got a photo like out in nature where somebody's standing and there's a lot of trees and bushes and things like that around. Pretty cool. Uh, and then for aquas, we'll also push aquas down the same as greens. Let's go negative 20. So I'm going to go negative 20 for that. Uh, blues, I'm going to bump up blues like plus 20. Uh, purple, I'll knock down negative 10 and magentas I'm going to knock down negative 20 um, just to kind of pull some of the color out of that. Let's come over here to luminance. And with luminance, we're going to push the reds up. So we're going to brighten the reds. I'm just watching the skin tone here uh, and probably something around plus 50 is going to look pretty good. Uh, we're not going to mess too much with orange. Maybe we'll brighten that a little bit. I don't, again, I don't want to push it too much because highlights on the skin are going to start looking really blown out if I do that. Uh, and the same thing with yellow. I'm going to push yellow up maybe to plus 50 as well. But again, just trying to be cognizant of skin and highlights. Highlights. I'm going to push my greens up to plus 30, plus 40. I like it. I like it. Uh, aquas, I'm going to push aquas down, negative 30. Blues down, negative 30. Purples down, negative 30. And magentas down, negative 30 as well. That's just going to affect a little bit of the sky. Say if somebody's got a blue sky behind them, we're just going to darken all that stuff up a little bit. A little ocean, a little sky, a little something like that. Uh, it'll just affect that. In this image, obviously not going to do a huge amount other than maybe attack his tie a little bit. Uh, but we're not too, too concerned with that. Uh, at this point, we can go over here to the effects tab, right? the FX tab, and we can add a little grain. Um, I would just caution you, don't go too crazy with the grain. You can really uh, kind of cause a lot of trouble with grain, but if you really want to add that retro effect, it can be nice to have the grain. Now, you may be saying, this preset looks awful. I mean, I would, I would contend with you. It doesn't look awful, but it's not quite where we want it to be. However, this is the point at which I would save the preset, uh, and the reason is, let me just show you here. I'm going to just name this, um, I don't know, uh, let's say 01 uh, tutvid 
moody port for portrait. So 01 Tutvid Moody Port, and we're going to name the others 0, 0, 02, 3, 4, 5. All right, we're going to hit OK. There it is, 01 Tutvid Moody Port. Now, let's say I'm going to, I'm just going to come back out to here. I'm going to say, look, uh, from this little flyout menu, I'm going to say, take my image back to its default, right? And you've downloaded these presets, and you say, you know what? I'm going to try the 01 Tutvid. There it is. Great. Well, what you can do, and this is the reason that I didn't really mess too much here in the basics, is you can change the look of this preset quite a bit by playing with your white balance and really if it's a, an image where you've got a ton of orange you could come in and and suck some of the orange out or vice versa and I could say you know what it still seems like there's a little bit too much green here I can bump a little bit of magenta into this pull a little bit of the warmth back into it and maybe overall just reduce some of the vibrance pump a little clarity into it and maybe there I have the image that I really really want so that's that's how I'm trying to work with these presets as we create them I try to leave kind of as much customization uh, for you to be able to do with your own images as possible so we've just messed with the tone curve and the HSL grayscale sliders and we've got uh, our number one uh, our number one camera raw preset let's hit okay and let's move along to another image here so over here in image number two we get the same deal camera raw smart object we double click on the layer thumbnail it's going to pop open uh, our camera raw editor for us here let's try that again there we go popped open the camera raw editor it's all default right out of the camera shot this in this uh, little garden here for a, a, a local fashion designer and we're going to immediately jump into our rgb curve or point curve you got it uh, now here we're going to go fairly drastic with this what i'm going to do is i'm going to click to place a point right in the middle and just kind of hold the middle and then i'm going to pull down a little bit down here all right so we're going to begin darkening the shadows a little and then I'm going to brighten the highlights just a little bit, but then I'm going to pull down on the white point pretty drastically. So all the whites in the sky or any kind of blown out sky, it's going to become this very almost like film looking, washed out, white, very light gray uh, look. And then I'm going to pull up pretty harshly on my shadows and then create kind of this little, this little curve here at the bottom of my curve. So I'm going to try this, try this, just pull it right through here. Something kind of like that looks pretty good. I maybe want to adjust this point a little bit. We're just looking to create a fairly smooth curve coming through here. I'll bring that down a little bit. And you can see we've really created this interesting faded effect here in all of the dark pixels and shadows of the image. It's really, really cool. Uh, and of course, you can, you can back off this effect as much as you want by just adjusting your curve a little bit. Remember, the key in this, uh, the key in this particular fade is the fact that we're boosting these shadows so much and then we're flattening it out. Like all of this along here has virtually no contrast from point to point. So maybe if you want a little bit more contrast, just shorten that a little bit. It and boost these other points and we can bump a little bit more contrast into those shadows I actually think I kind of like that a little bit more we can see that little stone railing back there interesting all right let's go to our red channel and here on the red channel I'm just looking to boost and throw a little bit of red into my shadows so in the darkest parts of the image I'm just gonna throw a little red and just to make sure no red gets into the highlights I'm gonna drag a point back and just make sure my line is aligned with where it was let's go to the green channel here where I'm gonna come down here to this point and again the green channel is a little difficult to see but remember Remember we pushed some green into the shadows. We're he here we're gonna remove green from the shadows, which really isn't removing green so much as adding magenta. Uh, magenta is the opposite of green. So if I pull this line this way, you can see we're getting this really deep magenta wash. Now it's too much because it's it's kind of impacting the entire image. So we're gonna pull up on this uh, area here at a point right around here to say, look, you magenta influx just take place in the, the extreme darkest parts of the image and then take this entire line up here and pull it back into line with the entire image add a couple points if need be to try to level things out and you can see we now have added this nice purpley magenta color to our shadows now I'm gonna come over here to the blue channel where I'm simply gonna pull a little bit of blue into the darker parts of the image just kinda of subtly and then I'm gonna pull some yellow into the highlights in fact I'm gonna pull down on the white point to just sort of force some yellow and and make those really bright whitish areas of the image a little bit more creamy uh, yellowish colored it's gonna kind of affect the color of her white dress or actually I think it was a cream colored dress in this instance as well uh, but it's just a kind of a cool overall vintage faded uh, effect and let's jump over here to the HSL sliders uh, like we did before and we're gonna try to knife through this pretty quickly let's knock some of the red or, or I shouldn't say knock some of the red out but slide some of the red toward uh, magenta let's uh, boost the oranges toward yellow a little bit I kind of like that uh, let's drop yellow
yellows back toward orange a little bit. Again, that's going to affect the skin tone, so I'm just watching her skin. I'm not going to mess with any of the other colors. If there was a lot of sky in the image and I was particularly looking to have a, a preset that was affecting the sky, I might you know shift some of the aqua to be more blue or some of the purple to be more blue or maybe blue be more a little more purple or aqua depending on the effect uh, I'm aiming to uh, achieve. Uh, let's jump over here to the saturation tab. Now, in this case, I'm going to boost reds. So I'm going to boost reds to like plus 25. I kind of dig that. I'm also going to take oranges up. Let's just try knocking, uh, knocking it upward to like t plus 20. I'm looking at her skin. I'm looking at the flowers behind her. Her skin's, you know, kind of rich uh, when we do that. I'm also going to do it with the yellow. Push that up to like plus 30. I'm also going to go pl greens plus 30. I really want all the nature around her to be pretty brightly colored. I'm not going to mess around with aquas. But what I am going to do is take blues to negative 30. I'm going to take purples to negative 40, and I'm going to take magentas to negative 50. So I'm just kind of staggering these on the way out uh, using saturation. And then over here with luminance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken up reds to like negative 20. Again, I'm just – normally I would I would kind of hone this in even tighter, but I'm just trying to keep it at nice round numbers to make it a little easier to follow because I know I'm moving through it kind of quickly. Uh, I'm going to go with the yellow channel here, 30 – let's go 35. We're going to brighten up all the yellow. It's going to help brighten up her skin a little bit. Uh, over here with greens, we're going to boost the greens. I think we'll go like plus 40 on the greens. Uh, just keeping in mind she's in a garden. Maybe this would be a preset that's going to look good with like a pretty naturally lit photo uh, with a lot of kind of foliage and things like that around. Let's go like negative 20 on the aqua. Let's go negative 30 on the blues. We'll go negative 40 on purples and negative 50 on the magenta. As you can see, I like doing this kind of staggering thing uh, with some of my color channels, especially when I don't 100% see what they're going to do uh, in the image that I'm working on. Just I'm trying to think about multiple scenarios where this preset would be used. And as I look at it, I can see still like up here on her cheeks, there's just a little bit too much orange. So let's go back to hue. And what I might do is let me first try taking the oranges and bumping them up a little bit more toward yellow. Mm, I don't like what that's doing. I think we need to come over here to saturation. Let's take these oranges and go negative, mm, like negative five, I think is what we want to do. Yeah, negative five is going to look better, uh, at least in this particular instance of the shot. So I think we're going to, this is going to be our barometer for this preset. So I think we'll ride with negative five in the oranges. And then last but not least, we'll come over here and do a little bit of grain as well, uh, because all of our presets here today are going to have a little bit of grain. Uh, it's good to have a little bit of, of finishing grain. This is a little bit more extreme than finishing grain. You can see where we're applying a hefty amount of grain out there. Uh, but hey, we're doing what we want to do here. All right, let's name this one O2 hyphen. Uh, what did I call it oh tutvid hyphen moody hyphen port and we're gonna say okay so we've got our first two presets uh, and again you can always just say camera roll defaults let's add that o2 moody preset great and of course you can go in and you can mess with your uh your white balance and all of that and come in here and really get uh whatever effect you uh whatever effect your heart desires. Uh, so I'm actually going to undo that because I don't really like the way that looks. And I'm just going to hit OK and commit that change. And we're going to move right along to image number three. Now this is uh, a slightly overexposed photo uh, out in a park. And I'm almost certain this is natural light. If it's not, uh, the, the studio strobe I brought out was, was simply to add a little bit of fill light and it's not doing a huge amount to our image. So this is going to be a good shot to create a preset for. So we'll go ahead and double click on the thumbnail. It's going to open up our camera raw editor and we're going to go through virtually the same process again over here on RGB. Uh, what I think we're going to do is pull down, darken up those shadows and then just pull this back to, to make sure we maintain some of the nice crisp highlights. Let's jump over here to the red channel. I'm going to throw some red into the highlights. That can be a cool like retro type effect and pin this back down here so we're not getting a ton of reds in our shadows. And I may even pull this point back just to sort of force some cyan into the shadows. So we have this like overall red wash but the, the darker parts of the image are definitely being neutralized of the red. In fact, we're introducing a little bit of cyan. And of course, the green channel next up, we're going to just uh, I think we're just going to do a, a slight overall boost of the green channel, just like right there in the middle. We're just going to kick it upward a little bit. Let's see if I pull backward on the... Yeah, you know what? I think I'll introduce a little bit of uh, magenta in the very dark parts of the photo. You can see it's just affecting the darker pixels down there. That's kind of cool. I kind of dig it. I'm going to come over here to my blue channel. And here in the blue channel, we're going to push just a little tiny drip of blue into the darker parts of the image. And we're going to pull a little bit of a healthier amount of yellow into our highlights. So you can see we're starting to get kind of this. If I hit the letter P, I can sort of preview before and after. You can see the effect that we're getting here uh, on our image. So that's pretty cool. Let's jump over to Hue Saturation. And we'll begin with the hue tab here. I'm going to, I think, slide the reds a little bit more toward the orange. Let's go like plus 30 on that. And I'm going to slide the oranges a little bit more toward the yellow. 
And then here, we're going to try to push the yellows a little bit more toward the green. That can be a really good idea when you have a lot of foliage and greenery because there tends to be a lot of uh, yellow in that. The problem is there's also a lot of yellow in the human skin tone, and you don't want to take the yellow in somebody's skin tone and start making them look green. Usually not a very good look. So let's try pushing this like plus 30. It's not too bad. Uh, I, I can live with it. I can see there's a little bit of uh, a hint in his skin tone. We're pushing it toward green, uh, but I think it's going to work just fine for the image. And let's push the greens just to click toward uh, aqua. I'm going to go plus 10 on that, and I'm not going to mess with any of the other colors in uh, in the hue uh, dialog here. Let's go over to saturation. We're going to saturate the reds a little bit more because uh, I think his skin looks pretty good saturated a little bit more. That's cool. I think I'll also add just like plus 10 on the orange. Again, you just want to watch your skin tones. You don't want people to start looking like you're giving them a really bad uh, spray tan. So we're going to go plus 10 on that. We'll try going like plus 20 on the yellow. Eh, maybe we go like plus 15 on the yellow. I think that's a little better. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Let's go like plus 40 on the greens. I like that. Uh, let's go to aquas. I'm going to go like plus 20 on aqua, even though there's not a huge amount of aqua in the scene here. And I'm going to bump up the blues a lot. Just take, just bearing in mind, that this is probably going to be used for a lot of outdoor photos. So you're going to have some sky back there. So let's make the sky nice and rich. Despite the fact that we don't have it here in this shot, I'm going to go like plus 40 for my purples and I'll go plus 30 for my magentas there. That's pretty cool. Let's jump over to the luminance tab here. I'm not going to mess with reds. You can see how this would really affect like his lips, his ears, kind of any of those areas of his skin. Uh, you know what? Actually, maybe I'll go negative 10 on that now that I'm looking at it. I really like the way that that really pulls his face together really well. Uh, and I think I'm going to push the brightness of the orange up plus 10. Maybe plus 15, that looks pretty good. Uh, we're gonna go yellows. Let's try darkening the yellows a little bit. Negative 20, negative 25, I can live with that. Negative 25. Uh, and the greens, I actually wanna push the greens up. So plus 10 for the greens. Not gonna mess with aqua. Blues, I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna go like my negative 30 here. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go negative 20 with the purples and I'm gonna go negative 10 with magenta. So I'm gonna stagger those colors out. That's pretty cool. And we're also gonna use a tab we haven't used yet, which is the camera calibration tab. Uh, I could set this to like a camera neutral uh, profile, which is gonna just help flatten things out a little bit. I kinda dig it. But the main thing I'm gonna do here is shift my blue primary to negative 50. Right there, that looks pretty good. And then the saturation for the primary blue, I'm gonna set that to negative uh, 60. So you can see that really just changed the complexion of the image. If I hit the letter P, before and after. You can see we've really done a lot to this photo uh, in terms of changing it. And of course, if we want to add a little bit of grain on the way out the door, as we have been, uh, we can go ahead and add some grain. I'm just literally adding random amounts of grain uh, just because, you know, all right, there we go. That looks like it's probably about enough grain. And we can go to our presets and save this preset. What have we been doing? 03 hyphen tutvid hyphen moody hyphen port and hit OK. And great, just like that, we hit OK. And oh, by the way, remember, you can still come in here and play around with your white balance and all that good stuff. Uh, hit OK. We commit that change. We've got our third preset, and I'm loving it. And it's time to jump over to the fourth image where we're going to create, you guessed it, a fourth preset. We'll double click here on the smart object thumbnail. And if you haven't picked up by now, a lot of these uh, presets are kind of following a, a, a similar sort of template here. Uh, we're going to set the blacks here. We're going to go negative 50 on the blacks. We're really going to crunch down on those blacks here for the shot. And then we're going to come over to the point curve once more. We're going to pull up on our blacks pretty drastically, actually. And then we're going to pull back down to just kind of bring things back into play, but you can see how it gives us this really cool muted tone when we do that. And in fact, what we're gonna do is pull up on this a little bit more drastically and then pull down on the highlights. So I hit the letter P before and after. You can see that already just one curve adjustment mixed with our blacks adjustment. We've really changed the overall look of this photo quite a bit. I'm gonna come over here to the reds and all we're gonna do is add a little bit of cyan to the highlights. Kind of just like that. We don't want to go too uh, too dramatic. I think that looks pretty good. And then over here in the greens channel, we're going to do kind of what we did before. Again, it's so difficult to see this green line. We're going to pull up to add greens to our shadows. And then we're going to really just force this line back to normal. All right, kind of like that. Let me look at the line. See, it's kind of still popped up a little bit. Let's try to get it kind of as lined up with the original line as possible. It looks pretty good. And we're just forcing some green into the shadows. And at this point, see, I can pull this point up. If I pull it up a lot, we get a lot of green down there. If I don't, or if I pull it over, we get a lot of purple. Note out here in the very deepest of shadows. Uh, so let's pull it up a little bit. It's going to give us this nice just green wash, like down here in the shadow of her hair and in the very darkest parts of her eyes, underneath her chin, and of course in the backdrop where it's dark enough. Uh, so that looks pretty cool. Let's jump over to the blue channel. And really all I'm looking to do 
do in the blue channels, add just a kiss of blue uh, to the darker parts of the photo, being careful not to go too crazy and introduce all kinds of colors into the highlights. So again, the letter P, there's before, there's after. We've already changed the image a huge amount. So of course, it's that time to go over to the HSL sliders. Let's go to hue here. I don't think I'm gonna change anything when it comes to hue. If anything, I may, I'm just looking at the reds here. I may just bump that like, Mm, negative 10. I kind of like what it's doing. It's bringing out some color in her lips, but I'm just watching very carefully the rest of her skin. Uh, we could play around with orange, but again, I don't know. If anything, we'll go plus five on orange, push that toward yellow a little bit, and I don't think I'm going to change anything else uh, in hue. In fact, I'm going to commit to that and just move along to saturation. Some of this is just personal taste. Uh, we're going to go like negative 40 or so on the reds. I'm just going to try to take out some of that red wash. Uh, orange, let's try going like plus 10, see what that looks like. I, yeah, I, I don't hate it. So we're going to go plus 10 on the orange. I could see how that would look cool in a lot of different photos. Let's go like plus 40, plus 30. Let's go plus 30 on the yellow slider. This is saturation, by the way. Uh, we're going to go plus... 50 on the greens, that's cool. The image is gonna have a very distinct greenness to it. Let's go like negative 50 on the aquas. Uh, let's go probably negative 40 on the blues, negative, mm, let's go negative 30 on the purples and just negative 20 on the magentas uh, to kind of just slide that back, create our little diagonal, uh, diagonal fading out of those colors. Uh, then over here on luminance, I don't know that I'm gonna mess with reds much. You can see that's gonna really just mess with her lips and kind of some of the darker tones in the skin. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave that at zero. I'm not going to play around with that too much. Uh, for oranges, I might actually go like negative 10 on the orange, just darken up the skin a little bit, and then push a little bit of brightness back into the highlights of the skin by going like plus 30 on the yellows. I dig it. And then I'm going to go negative 30 on the greens. Uh, for aquas, there's not too much aqua in this particular image, but I'm still going to knock that down negative 10 and go like negative 20 for blues, negative 30 for purples, and negative 40 for magentas. There we go. I kind of like that. And then last but not least, we'll jump back over to camera calibration. And I think... As much as you may think, hey, push some additional green into the shadows, I think I'm actually going to push some magenta into the shadows. Let's go like plus 20 on the magenta. That's an interesting look. You can see how now it's sort of like that magenta fighting with the green we're forcing in there using the green channel and the curves adjustment. I kind of sort of dig it. And then we'll throw a little bit of grain into here, like 20 grain. Let's go like 40 on the size or so. And 50 on the roughness is fine. So there we go. That's a pretty cool little effect we've got going on there. Let's go to our presets tab. Let's save this bad boy as number four, hyphen tutvid, hyphen moody, hyphen port for portrait, of course, hit OK. And of course, we can hit the letter P to get a complete before and after version of our image. And again, some of you are absolutely going to hate it. Some of you are going to think it's cool. But you know what? Here's what's great about it. It's free. You can do it if you want. You can throw it in the garbage if you want. And nobody gets hurt. All right. So last but not least, we're going to do one more sort of moody portrait preset. We're going to double click on this thumbnail to open it up in the camera raw editor. I think I'm going to begin here uh, by just reducing the highlights. Let's push those down to like negative 10 uh, in this instance. Again, a, a lot of subtleties. But as you're seeing, all of these different little effects are adding up to one pretty drastic change. Let's jump right into to the parametric tone curve here. And I'm gonna pull up on this black point and then I'm gonna pull out to somewhere right around here. I'm really looking to flatten those darker tones. You can see I'm getting this really sort of gray, low contrasty look. It's really gritty looking. Maybe I'll brighten up some of the mid-tones a little bit. I'll pull this over to here and then I'm gonna pull down on the overall whites just kind of like that. So you can see our curve is kind of like the serpentining S curve. Maybe I'll try to line up my points with grid lines to make it a little easier for you guys to follow if you're following along. So you can see that nice like S curve with our grid, you know, before and an after. We're really flattening the tones in the photo. This is gonna be a very drastic, very heavy effect. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is just pull down. I'm gonna introduce some cyans into the, uh, into the brighter parts of the image and then just pull back on uh, on the, the red point there to just kind of restore order for the shadows. I just want the cyan, for the most part, to be attacking the brighter pixels in the image. Let's go to the green channel. And in the green channel, I think I'm just gonna pull up a very, very tiny bit down here in the darker portion of the image, just to give like a blip drop of green into the shadows. Now this image is gonna be very affected by this because there's just a lot of dark pixels in this image. But remember, we're creating a preset that's gonna be used for lots and lots of different images. So if we just exactly tailor it to just this photo, chances are it's not gonna be quite as versatile. And next up, we're gonna go to the blue channel 
And let's let's really pump some blue into the shadows. I'm going to go overboard a little bit with this image again, just bearing in mind that there are a lot of shadows in this image. So I'm going to kind of push this back, and then I'm going to pull this back into line with kind of how things were. Maybe I'll pull a little bit more blue just up there, and then I'm going to kind of pull it back into line with the original image there. So I'm just adding just an additional drip of blue just beyond all the darker, uh, all the really dark pixels in the image. It kind of gives this... There's just a little bit of blue entering the sort of well, what looks like the highlights in this image, but it's really going to be more like the, the the brightest bits of the shadows in an image that has you know more exposure and less darkness than this photo has. Uh, but even on this photo, it's kind of a cool, very film-style effect. Uh, let's jump over to the HSL sliders like we've been frequenting here. Uh, I think I'm going to push my reds toward the orange, maybe to the tune of plus 15. I'm going to use my arrow keys again just to keep it simple. I'm going to go, yeah, plus 10 on orange, shifting orange toward yellow. And then I think I'm going to shift yellow toward green. Uh, maybe about plus 20. That looks good. And then for green, I'm going to pull green back toward yellow to the tune of negative 60. I'm not going to mess with aqua blues, purples, any of that. Uh, here in saturation, I think I'm actually going to push the saturation of reds up. Maybe plus 30. That looks good. Uh, let's actually try taking some of the saturation out of orange. Let's go, yeah, negative 40. I kind of dig it. I really like it for this photo. And then let's go like plus 60 on the yellows to help counterbalance that a little bit. Let's go like plus 10, maybe plus 15, or negative 10, negative 15. I'm going to settle with negative 15 on the, um, on the good old greens there. And then I'm going to go like plus 20 on aqua. Plus 30 on blues. I got plus 40 on purples and plus 50 on magentas. Again, it's not going to do a huge amount for this particular photo. There's a little bit of action happening up here, uh, but it's not going to do a ton for this photo. I'm just thinking in terms of outdoor photos, uh, things where there is blue in the sky and maybe buildings surrounding the subject. Let's jump into the luminance tab here. We're going to push reds up. I want to brighten the reds. So like plus 30 for them. And then even oranges too. I want to brighten them. Maybe plus 40. We'll come down here to yellows and we'll go kind of crazy. Eh, you know what? I'll just go plus 40 on the yellows as well. Greens, I'm going to go like plus 20. I kind of like that. Aquas, I'm going to go negative 20. Uh, blues, I'm going to go like negative 30. Again, if it was a sky outside, maybe I would want uh, the sky to be a little bit darker uh, in this type of moody photo. So I'm going to make my blues about negative 30. Purple's negative 20. Magenta's negative 10. You know, you're getting the you're getting the, the program here. And let's head over to camera calibration tab. And here I'm going to do a little bit actually. Let's go like plus 20 to throw some purple into the shadows. Let's adjust the hue of the red. Push it back toward pinks about negative 20 and then increase the saturation to like plus 10. Uh, I'm going to push greens back toward yellow to the tune of, let's go negative 30. I kind of dig it. And then I want to reduce the saturation. So we'll go negative, yeah, we'll go negative 40. That looks pretty good. And then blues, I'm going to push a little bit more toward the magenta purple realm. So I'll go plus 40 and then reduce the saturation of that effect to about uh, negative 20, excuse me. And then again, we'll just come in here and we'll go like 20 on the grain. Uh, 50 on the size and whatever 50 75 on the roughness something like that Ooh, that's actually a little bit too much let's go like 10 on the grain a dark image like this it really shows up so this is like a really like murky hazy underexposed faded type of effect it's going to be a little bit more limited how you use this one let's hit the letter p to get a before and to get an after i actually kind of prefer the before image uh but the whole point of this is to create a preset that will be usable on a lot of different images. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just save this preset 05-tutvid-moody-port. We're going to save that. We're going to hit OK. We're going to hit OK. And it's going to bring us back in here to Photoshop. Now, here's where we can kind of have a little bit of fun. We could like go back to this image, bring it into Camera Raw. And we could say, you know what, restore those Camera Raw defaults. Let's go with that last one we created, 05-tutvid-moody-port. And we can see what that effect does to this image. Now you can say, whoa, she looks like a ghost. Maybe that's what you want. It actually kind of looks cool. But I know that she looks kind of blue and it looks like there's a lot of green in the image. So if I simply bump up the magenta in the photo a little bit and warm things up, what does that make everything look like? It still kind of makes it look washed out. She still kind of looks ghosty. Uh, but you have a lot of options in terms of what you want to do with the photo uh, when you just can come in and apply these different presets. There's that preset. Let's try like the 03 preset that we created. There we go. That's kind of like super warm and red, maybe a little bit too warm. We could just knock it down, make the overall image a little bit more blue and maybe even a little bit more blue than that. And we get this very, you know, 1980s, 1970s even film look 
here with this uh, photo. We're not even necessarily emulating film per se, uh, but we're getting an interesting effect. And then 04 on this photo, you can see it's this very murky, faded effect where maybe it actually needs a little bit more warmth added to it, uh, something like that, uh, and actually some of that green taken out of it. So, you know, the, the whole point is there's a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of different things you can do with these presets. And of course, use the link down in the description below. Download these uh, actions, these pre these camera raw presets. Use them for whatever you want. Have fun with them. Customize them. Uh, if you do use it on some photos on Instagram, tag me if you want. I would love to see how you guys use them, the effects that you get, or just what you end up using, the actions you downloaded for. I would absolutely be thrilled. Don't worry. I'm not going to be screaming like, oh, pay me for this. You can't sell that photo. I honestly do not care. Use them for whatever you want, however you want. doesn't bother me. So yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure again you hit the like button, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any Photoshop tutorials in the future for creating five, you guessed it, you guessed it, you counted it, one, two, three, four, five different Visco inspired moody portrait presets. <sighs> That's a mouthful. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.